Wood, and I'm a mezzo-soprano, and I recently graduated from the University of Regina with my Master of Music in Performance. Uh, so the first question that we were asked is, what spurred you on to um, pursue music after high school? And I can't remember a time when music wasn't a part of my life, but I do remember formative moments that spurred me on to a career in music. When I was 12, I won tickets for the Manitoba to see the Manitoba Opera and the production of Don Pasquale. From the moment it started, I was completely in awe, in awe of the costumes and the music and the incredible singing and acting. From that day forward, I told everybody that I knew that I was gonna be an opera singer when I grew up. Uh, well, I would love to say I never once doubted that decision, I can honestly tell you that every time I thought about a career other than music, I just didn't feel complete. So music for me, has felt very much like a calling. And uh, Carl Palmack, who is the Dean of Music at Ithaca College in New York said, if you can wake up in the morning and you can picture yourself doing anything else other than music, you should do it. And I have never been able to picture myself doing anything else. For me, there was a 12 year gap in between my undergrad and my graduate degree. And a lot of life happened in between there for me. I've taught 17 to 23 private voice students a semester uh, at Briarcrest College in Karenport, Saskatchewan. Plus I had all my children during that time. So I really thoroughly enjoyed my graduate degree and the time that I was able to dedicate specifically to my voice. As a teacher and a mother, it's often easy to get caught up in helping others grow and improve at the expense of your own development. So my graduate degree enabled me to carve out time to further my craft and increase my musicianship. The neat thing is that in turn, it made me a better teacher as I had a much larger knowledge base to pull from. The more I learned about my instrument, the more I could share with my students. And it also gave me opportunity to discover music that I was much less familiar with. I decided that for my final graduate recital, I would select pieces entirely composed by Canadian composers. I think it is so important as a Canadian musician to know and champion music written by Canadians. And this music, perhaps more than any other that I have performed, has made me aware of my strengths and my weaknesses. And it fo forced me to take ownership of my voice as an instrument. And so in hindsight, I feel that as a Canadian musician, it is only fitting that it was Canadian music that helped me to find my voice, both as a singer and as a person. As with so many others, COVID-19 has definitely changed the way my year was supposed to look. Uh, the ending of my master's degree looked much different than I had expected it to, since I had to record and perform my recital with no audience. Outside of school, I had the opportunity to learn how to teach lessons and classes over Zoom. My adjudication contract contracts were cancelled, as well as shows that I was scheduled to be a part of. And all three of my children were suddenly at home, and I also had to learn how to homeschool with the help of my children's teachers. Uh, I think during this time, it's really easy to think about all the things that have been cancelled and the shows that I was looking forward to performing in. But there are many good things that have come out of COVID-19 as well. First of all, I have tons of time to practice. Um, <clears throat> I no longer have to desperately schedule my practice in between teaching and rehearsing and taking care of my kids. I also have had the opportunity to spend way more time with my family, especially at a time of year uh, where things are generally really, really busy for me. I also get to try out a lot of new tasty recipes I love cooking and I love baking and um, it's been a real treat to, to make these fun exciting meals for my family. Um, 
my children usually despise them, but me and my husband have been enjoying all the, the great food. Um, but lastly, I've had the opportunity to rest my body and my soul. And I typically spend my year moving from performance to performance and teaching and being a parent. And it's, it just can get really, really busy. And I'm enjoying this period of rest. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to how sweet it will be to perform in person again. And honestly, I don't think I will ever take an audience for granted ever again. Um, the energy that an audience gives is just so encouraging and, and I miss it a ton. My career goals involve me one day obtaining a doctorate degree in music so that I can continue to do what I love, which is teach and perform. I also hope to continue to use my voice to encourage, move, and lift people out of their present circumstances. Music is so powerful. It has the ability to lift you up and bring you to tears. And there's just something so beautiful about being able to communicate that. And it's my honor as a musician, as a singer who gets to use text and music to share that with others. And I, I just hope that in the future I have tons more opportunities to do that. It is my pleasure to share with you three Métis songs from Saskatchewan by Malcolm Forsyth. This collection includes transcriptions of pieces sung by Joseph Gaspard Genot, a popular Métis folk singer hailing from La Brette, Saskatchewan. Specifically, Adieu de la Merrière is about an arranged marriage, and this piece was performed at many Métis weddings to send off the bride into her new life. The third song, and of particular interest, is the Chanson de la Grenouille, which expresses the Métis pride in their victory at the Battle of Seven Oaks against the British. This piece, dating back to the Red River Rebellion, could be heard in the Labrette and Catepa region as early as 1896. I would like to personally thank artist and First Nation slash Métis historian Dr. Sherry Farrell Reset for her insight into these pieces and for her excitement and her encouragement to perform this selection. I would also like to thank Dr. Chris Kaler for accompanying me for this set. Enjoy! <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Thank you.